Hey folks, hello and welcome. We are doing something today that's a bit of a crossover because today we're going to help out people who grow in greenhouses and folk who do indoor plants because today we're going to look at how to get rid of fungus gnats. <sighs> okay, fungus gnats. <laughs> This has been a real pain in the neck for me, so I've spent the last few months researching like a crazy person and doing all sorts of experiments so that I can share the results with you and help you guys. So if you don't know what a fungus gnat is, okay, let me put it to you this way. In the greenhouse or indoors if you've got indoor plants, what it is is these tiny little horrible black flies teeny tiny little things and you'll see them crawling around on the plant on the soil flying around near it they're just really really annoying but they don't do any harm that's the thing they're just annoying okay now the thing that we have to think about is one of those little flies can lay about 300 eggs in your soil and that's 300 more of those little flies but those little larvae that come out of the eggs, those actually normally, normally don't do any harm, but can do harm if you're not careful. They eat decomposing sort of like plant matter and stuff in the soil, fungus in the soil, that kind of thing. So if you use compost with peat in it, you'll know all about this. Another reason to go peat free. The thing is, Usually they don't do any harm, but occasionally they can damage baby plants or seedlings, cuttings, that kind of thing. Okay, they can damage the roots of them. So you really don't want them apart from the fact they're annoying. Okay, so what happens is the flies live on top of the soil on the leaves flying about. They lay their eggs just under the surface and when those little larvae hatch, they actually burrow a wee bit deeper again. So you'll actually get them right through the soil, okay? So, if you don't have a mad infestation like I've got, the easiest way to deal with it I've found, and I've tried lots of different things, and this is something I've found that's awesome and it's organic, okay? And it's these mosquito bits, right? Now, if you're in the States, you will know about this stuff, you guys, this seems to be really easily available. It's not as easy to get in the UK, okay? So I'll do the usual and I'll put some of my affiliate Amazon links down in the description of where I got this stuff. Um, because you, it's really expensive because it comes from the States and you want to avoid paying the postage and packing of it coming from the States if you can. But you'll see what these are, okay? These are these, the little pieces of corn, okay? and they've been coated with a bacteria. What it does, it is a bacteria that only affects those larvae, not just fungus gnats. It's called mosquito bits because it affects mosquitoes as well, that type of thing, okay? These are awesome. What you do, the, the, the official way of using it is you sprinkle it over the soil and you water, and then that washes the bacteria into the soil, and that's how it gets to things, okay? What I found, though, is doing that, you end up with these little mouldy bits of corn sitting on top of your plants. Didn't like that. So, a bit of research and discovered. What I do now is I put a few spoonfuls of this into a big bottle of water and leave it overnight to soak. And that's the water I use to water my plants. Okay, you have to give them a really good soak. Make sure that soil is soaked right through so you get all the layers and get to all the little guys in the soil as well. Okay, and that will deal with the larva in the soil. And obviously you redo this each time you water for a wee bit until you get it under control. Now, I'm talking about the fact that I'm soaking them. They do another version, same thing, and it's called dunks, mosquito dunks. It's exactly the same thing, but they're those discs so that they can actually be soaked in the water and left. Now, these things actually do loads um, of applications of water. They're designed for putting in ponds and swimming pools and all that kind of thing. So it's totally safe to use. It only affects these little larvae and it's a bacteria, it's not a chemical. So if you want to stay organic, this is a good thing, okay? So it doesn't affect aquatic life. So this stuff's safe to use in your ponds. In fact, that's what it's designed for. It's designed for like your swimming pools, your ponds, that kind of stuff, okay? Totally safe. Doesn't affect your pets, doesn't affect humans, birds, all that kind of stuff. It's awesome, okay? So I'm gonna get started on doing that with my plants, but, 
I've got a really bad infestation. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to get rid of the soil that could have all the eggs and the larvae and stuff in it, clean everything down and give them nice fresh new soil so we can start from scratch, okay? So that's the larva dealt with. But I said to you, these little flies, they can lay 300 eggs each. So you can get rid of the larva, you get one fly and you're starting again. So that's when, you, you might not like this, but that's when these yellow sticky traps come in. These, as you can see, I'll try not to show you too much of the beasties, because, but these are awesome. These trap the adult flies. So every fly you can trap is 300 eggs you've stopped getting laid, basically. So it's a two-pronged thing. You want to go with the application of the mosquito bites or dunks to get to the stuff in the soil and a sticky trap for the adults two-pronged thing and we keep doing this and we will get the little sods so I'm just going to get the sleeves up and get my stuff done so like I said first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the old soil and the old stickies now I've also got a bucket of water I'm just going to give everything a rinse. Like I say, I have a real serious infestation. You don't need to do this for all your plants if they're not as bad as mine. So, nice fresh soil. It's just multi-purpose compost. But as always, peat-free. Always peat-free, folks. Nice clean soil. And the last thing I'm going to do is give them a good water with the treated water that I've got. Now, like I said, what I do is I've got a big water bottle that I fill. Apparently there's a kid being murdered in the play park. Um, I fill that and I soak either a dunk or the bits into that, leave it overnight and then that's what I water the plants with. And again, you're making sure you give them a really good water so that all of that soil gets affected. And doing it this way, you don't then have the mouldy corn bits sitting on top of your plant, so that's why I do it this way. And before I put it back, I will give it a sticky as well. Now, here's another thing, if you're using these sticky traps, they all come, they come a bit like this. The idea is that you have them on these little sticks and you put them in the pot, in the soil like that, okay? And the idea is that the yellow attracts the flies, they're flying about and they land on that and they get stuck. I've actually found that these are much more useful if you actually lay them flat, horizontal to the surface of the soil. They just seem to work a lot better that way, I don't know why. So now, he gets to come back indoors, out of quarantine, and go back to his wee spot. Where hopefully now, he'll be really happy. So, mosquito bits or dunks in your water, give them a soak, give your plants a really good water, and do that regularly. Every time you water them, use that water, and that will help deal with the lava. The flies, you have to use the little yellow sticky traps and that will kill the adult flies. And that two-pronged thing, over time, is going to deal with the fungus gnats for you. Indoors or in the greenhouse. See you guys!